Hello and welcome to another video. This is going to be something a little bit different. In this video, I'm going to be painting some copper non-metallic, but I'm going to pretty much do it as little editing in this video as I can, so you can see the full process. Because sometimes in videos on YouTube, you just don't get that raw showing of what the technique is. So I hopefully this is just something a little bit different and you know, let me know if you enjoy it. Yeah, so welcome to this video. Like I said uh, in the opening, this was uh, a very much uh, an impromptu video. It was, I was kind of just sitting down to do a little bit of non-metallic copper practice because it's something that I've not played around with for a while and I thought you know what let's just turn the camera on and make a video and uh, let's see what happens and and that's exactly what I did so it's had a little bit of editing not much and I'm just um, gonna put it up here and and, and just show you the process because it turned out quite well so I've primed the model black and uh, and this is basically me just gonna be building up this color um, kind of just sketching in what I um, kind of where I want the highlights to be with Doom Bull Brown um, the reason why I'm going for Doombull Brown uh, as well as Scrag Brown is because it's kind of got a, like an orangey tint to the colour and obviously Copper has, has got like a, an orangey colour. Brass is more on the yellow. Uh, I do use Japanese Uniform and Ivory later on just to push those highlights but it's kind of mixed in with the Scrag Brown and the Doombull and it kind of makes a mess. Uh, but yeah, I'm just kind of just like moving around the model and um, just sketching in quite rough you know it's not like trying to make any smooth blends or anything i'm just literally just kind of like stippling and drawing little lines making making a little bit of a mess because it's kind of what you you, you want to do metallic isn't really um like really all about the smooth blends so non-metallic can be quite like scratchy um so yeah but on just on a, a quick one if you are enjoying my content um please do give me um a subscribe uh, and, and like the video um, it all helps with the algorithm and uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely in need of that help um, the, the channel is it's doing really well subs wise it, it's growing really really well a lot bigger than I ever expected but uh, my personal goal is to hit that 4,000 watched hours and uh, yeah so I'm really hoping that if you do please watch the full video it will massively help um, because I'm, I'm very close I'm, I'm not just over a thousand to go and I've got about five months to uh, to get that and then um, I achieve that goal and it's not really about the money it, the, um, the, realistically the channel is never really going to make any money even if it does have uh, the the monetization turned on it's more about the, the 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 personal goal of being able to hit those 4,000 hours because it is pretty much a meaty amount of hours that needs to be consumed by viewers so yep yeah, if you can't please watch the videos to the full and uh, obviously um, interact with the video and it helps with the algorithm and it's all good so yeah if you like this content let me know in the comments below if you want me to do more so again um, at this stage now i've kind of just added a little bit of scrag brown to the doom bull brown and i'm just going to continue going around and sort of just pushing those highlights a little bit more um, I think it was at this point that I was like, oh, well, I might as well just do the whole of the front rather than just the chest piece. Uh, and uh, I think this is where I got it into my head that I was like, do you know what? Maybe maybe this video will actually work and I should do actually do a proper video out of this. Um, and I was even contemplating doing the legs as well, but uh, I didn't. I just, I just concentrate on the chest. Um, but yeah, um, just going around. Uh, again, as you can see, it's just, it's just like stippling and little dots and stuff. It's, it's trying to get as much texture in there as, as I possibly can because I think that kind of helps with the shine a lot. Now the abs area are and can be a little bit of an issue. Now I haven't put my magnifying glasses on because I kind of just was like playing around and um, I wasn't really that interested in how to get in a smooth transition. But if you are having a problem with your eyes and seeing like really small detail like that, you can pick up a, a set of magnifying glasses from um, Amazon for about 
10 to 20 pound i have a set um and even as like an inbuilt light that i can cl um, charge it up with a usb and uh and then you know i've got a little bit of an additional light on it you don't really need it you know you just need a decent lamp and um yeah you can you can go there but uh, yeah just just go to amazon and uh and, and and search for magnifying glasses and there's quite a lot i've tried to get a pair of an actual pair of glasses rather than ones that are, are like on an arm coming off your forehead um and the main reason why is because I, I found with my older set um that that the the uh, the glasses sticking right out from my face was actually catching my camera a few times and i think a few times if you ever watch me live stream or some of my older videos you can actually see the camera knock and that's that's my head hitting it because of the uh, the camera So again, just keep adding a little bits of uh, scrag brown into the, the mix. And you're kind of just wanting to build this up till you've almost got a pure scrag brown. And uh, just continue building up those highlights. We will be coming in with some glazes later on. And um, yeah, but this is a long video. It's like nearly 45 minutes or so. So, um, you know, be prepared to uh, skip forward a bit or just continue watching. Please, do, yeah, continue watching and uh, yeah so doing the edge highlight um now getting the edge highlight done is kind of good because you can actually build up on that and actually push it uh and this little line through the chest i kind of imagine that to sort of being sort of just a reflective um line and again this was me practicing so um and i kind of just went for it just to see what it would look like there was no sort of uh, reference to this or anything um but when you do non-metallics, it's it's kind of a good idea to sort of get a catalogue of pictures um, of metallic surfaces. Uh, and I have been known when I've been out on a walk and things to um, whip out my phone and take a picture. If even if that's like a bark on a tree or um, like a, a metallic like surface, like in a in a, in, in a park or something. Uh, and just to basically have that reference material there for you to go back and look at because it, it's kind of it can be kind of handy and i think that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks a lot of people have when it comes to non-metallics is where to place your highlights and where to place your shadows um and how that light sort of comes into play um i try to imagine when i'm doing this that i have four points of light um, basically in in each of the corner around the miniature um, looking down at it at like almost like at a 45 degree angle coming down um, and that way then it, it kind of helps because obviously the, the really really cool pro painters they're really amazing at being able to paint non-metallic and no matter how you look at it and from what angle you look at it at um, it looks like a reflective surface because they've managed to achieve that optical illusion of having all of those highlights in a specific place that regardless of where you're looking at it from the from the miniature they, they, it kind of looks legit and and that and I think that's down to like sort of trying to approach it with at least four points of light around it if you just come from one directly above then if you sort of move the miniature in a certain direction it's going to destroy that illusion that you're basically creating and that's what non-metallic metals is you're it's painting an optical illusion you're trying to trick your brain and your eyes into believing that what you're looking at is a metallic surface when in reality it isn't and obviously this is this is a painting technique that's been around for hundreds of years and if you look at like all of the renaissance painters everything they did was done with non-metallic metals it was all done with browns and greys and whites and you know all those types of colors that you would expect to have and they they painted like chrome type non-metallics and gold and silver and copper and bronze and 
like we we're spoiled now because we have metallic paints but they didn't in those days and they were able to achieve like amazing results just by simply just light and color theory which is just amazing So I think about this stage I was on like a 50-50 like a mix of Scrag Brown and Doombull Brown. Uh, and again, I'm just trying to just, just stippling in those highlights. And the paint's quite thin, so even if you go over a previous um, a previous layer, because the paint isn't, um, it's quite translucent, um, you'll, you'll kind of leave the previous darker shade underneath and you'll kind of get it overlapping. Um, it, it, that's also a really good way of doing marble, uh, using the translucent of paint over the top of uh, a solid opaque base coat, and you can kind of create that sort of layer of paint inside a surface, um, and which is really good for um, uh, for marble. I will be doing a uh, a marble base at some stage in the very near future. Uh, I'm just waiting for um, some plastic card to arrive, and then I'll be making one. But yeah, as you can see, just going back in and can just continue pushing those highlights and, and already it's looking pretty decent and we're still not really near the final stages yet we're a long way off um like i said there's very little editing in this video so the the 45 minute runtime is about right i think it was about just short of an hour in total that took me to do this entire chess piece um so if you imagine that that sort of time on on everything that's on the miniature so at least an hour to do each leg so that'll be what two at least another three hours and then the rear of the model um, at least another hour for that so you're looking at about four hours maybe a little bit more just to do this body um, just for the the non-metallic armor so it, it it can be quite time consuming um, so you know just bear with it and um, just play around and that's exactly what this video is for me I was just playing around, having a little practice. Um, like if this had looked terrible by the end of it, th this video wouldn't have been made. Uh, I'd have just like deleted the footage and just went, well, cool, I tried, I practiced, I need to do a little bit more before doing something. Um, cool, let's just, you know, prime the model again and then have a, a rethink about how I'm going about doing it and trying to improve on that and that's, and that's kind of like you should kind of take that approach with your painting um, especially like older miniatures don't throw them out don't don't like like go over them or reprime them or strip them um you know put them to one side and, and have them as a reference to look back on and and you can actually hold them up next to your uh, your other models to see exactly where you're um, you've come from in regards to um your, your progress of, of, of your painting journey uh, when I do a non-metallic gold which I will be doing and I'll be doing that on a full miniature not just the chest piece uh, and the reason why is one of my first miniatures that I really did properly non-metallic was a Stormcast Eternal when they first come out and I was kind of following along with the painting butter videos that were coming out on YouTube at the time by Ben Comets and Michael um, who uh, owned um, painting butter and um, I it was kind of one of like my first real serious attempt at trying to do this and uh, I used like obviously what Ben was uh, was explaining and, and, and saying in the videos and I thought it was really really good um, and that miniature is in my case behind me right now and that 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 miniature itself has been fe um, featured in um, the the old Warhammer visions uh, magazine which was the one where I just had the photos um and i think it's been featured somewhere else on games workshop as well uh and uh, yeah it was it was shared quite a lot on social media and i was like really really surprised at it because when i look at it now i'm like oh my god that's terrible and it's kind of cool it looks kind of good uh, it actually won a, a painting competition uh, <laughs> at a local at my local games workshop which was really quite funny because when i do the gold when i do the gold non-metallic video um, I'll show you the back of it, which isn't done. Um, and the friend of mine that was a staff member at the time, um, he positioned the model at the back of the cabinet so you couldn't see the back of the model. 
uh, and it was basically like a public vote and it was uh, quite amusing um, so here I'm just coming in with a bit of a glaze and it's a, li a little bit of a glaze of Doombull Brown and what I want to do is it's it's just to get that sort of ready orange tone back into the color uh, back into the metallic um, and, and again every now and again you'll see me come back in with that Doombull Brown uh, glaze um, and it's, it's kind of just to sort of bring those tones back into an orange back into that orangey brown back into that sort of copper spectrum because obviously I'm using Japanese uniform at this stage to push my highlights and Japanese uniform does have yellow in it and obviously yellow is more um, is more of a brass tone and more of a gold tone um, and I was like I think at this point I was in very in a in a dangerous position of, of pushing this more into brass um, I don't think I think because of the orange and stuff that was in it I was I probably get away with it from not being gold but I was definitely sort of in the brass territory um, and that's one of the things that can be quite complicated with with copper because a lot of people um, sort of look at this and be like well you know um, copper is this color um, it isn't it's like it's like a dirty orangey brown um, brass is like a dirty sort of um, ochre orange uh, sorry yellow uh, and, and like this is at this point is very much moving into the brass territory so yeah had to uh, had to get a little bit of that uh, Doombo brown back in there to, to pull that back down into a sort of coppery tone which we do and you'll see as the video progresses Okay, so back to the stippling again, and um, we're still using that, uh, pushing that ochre, that sort of Japanese uniform into this. Um, it kind of worked as a really good base coat for it, because uh, we kind of got that nice bright uh, tone, uh, especially for the highlights. Now, there are a number of different ways of approaching this. We could have like la layered the colors in place and then layered the highlights in place and then use glazes to smoothen that transition out um, that's something that I'm tempted to do on an old space marine because that's kind of how you see those done quite a lot uh, so you know I may go back and do that what am I doing here yeah so that's uh, just just like smoothing out with some Doombo Brown again um, I think at this point I was kind of worried about the the sort of potential of moving into brass rather than being copper um, so there's a lot of adjustments going to happen uh, on the model from this point on. Uh, and this is where I'm kind of like really sort of playing around with the colours. Um, like potentially you could add a little bit of ver verdigris into this as well. Um, I may do a follow up um, video if everyone wants where I'll, I'll do some verdigris on this chess piece. Um, of how to sort of glaze that in and sort of get that in on a non-metallic surface because it, it, that can be a really daunting sort of prospect that you spend so long painting a, like a non-metallic surface like this on a miniature and then you're like right I'm going to do some verdigris and then you're like I don't want to do verdigris because you're scared in case you mess it up um, but so what I'll do is I'll do that in a follow-up video uh, to this um, so yeah, that would be kind of cool, I think, um, because it, it's kind of a lot of glazing, a lot of glazing, uh, and then just kind of get nice thin paint into those recesses. So we're we're pushing now. So we're, we've started adding um, a little bit of ivory to our previous mix. And you got to remember that previous mix was basically scrag brown and Japanese ochre, uh, Japanese uniform, sorry, 
Uh, and now we're just adding a little bit of ivory in this. And we're kind of, our, our main aim here is, is to start really pushing the highlights, really building up the, the lighter areas uh, and the, ref, the sort of light spots with the reflection. Um, again, it, it's still a lot of stippling and a little bit of lines. The paint is quite thin and I'm trying to sort of like build upon those layers. Um, and what I'm going to be doing very soon is I'm going to be coming in with some glazes of Doombull Brown again and sort of pulling that tone down into that sort of darker orangey brown. Um, if if Doombull Brown is too bright, dark for you, then Scrag Brown Glaze would work just as well because Scrag Brown is a really good copper colour. Um, I just went for the darker copper because I, I, it, this was quite bright and I needed to, to, to really bring it down because at this point, it, this isn't copper, this is brass. So, just working on those ab sections and this is a size 1 brush. Uh, from Rosemary Cole Series 33. Uh, this is pretty much my workhorse brush right now. Uh, it's pretty much what I use most of my painting on. Now, I will say that this brush is definitely coming to the end of its life. Um, it's got a really, really fantastic point, which is often what you'll find with brushes, especially Kalinsky Sable brushes, is as you use them, you basically wear down the, uh, the, the hair on the tip and uh, eventually you get this amazing point and this brush becomes like the greatest brush ever you can do so much cool edge highlighting with it and really pinpoint precision painting with it and it's so good uh, the problem is like your your that little tip that little point is going to disappear uh, and then you're going to be left with um, not a very good brush uh, so i'm enjoying this brush right now because it's at that stage where it's like super cool and super good but very very soon it will um it will lose its tip completely and uh, it will it will be relegated to being a base coat brush or a, um, a dry brush so here we are with the uh, the doomball brown um glaze again as you can see i'm just going all over the surfaces and working that round um it's quite a heavy wash glaze um to the point where i even have to get my hair dryer out just to give it a a blast to get that all nice and um, dry um, which um, I will be doing in a second I, I've, I've edited all of the uh, the hair drying out like this point here is where I get the hair dryer just to go do it and um, with the magic of editing it's all done and I'm back to painting so there's a lot more ivory being added into this again I don't like really saying ratios because um, that is very much a personal thing um, so I've added enough ivory in this where it's it's uh, it's more ivory than my previous mix. And you kind of just have to play that by ear. Um, essentially the rule of thumb is you want this highlight to be brighter than the previous mix that you've been using. Um, and, and ivory is the colour that, uh, that you're using on this. Um, now I've not used any white whatsoever in this miniature. Um, the brightest tone that I've used is ivory. Uh, which is a nice um, off-white anyway. Uh, and it's kind of becoming my go-to highlight colour for things like this. So at this point we're really sort of getting to the point where we're like really refining the highlights of where they're going to be. There is going to be another glaze and then we're going to be coming in at the end with some black glazes really to push that shadow and really enhance the contrast between light and dark uh, and that i think is what sells the non-metallic look is the 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 real strong contrast between the highlights and the shadows so i think even at this point right now it's looking pretty good um i'm pretty pleased with it and uh, yeah, it's still, I don't think, uh, a copper. Uh, I still think I'm in the uh, the brass sort of spectrum, uh, but I am going to be sorting that out again um, very shortly. So um, this, this is like using the same mix, just concentrating around the edges and a little bit around the point where I want that, uh, that light to be the most prominent. And 
just trying to pick out all of the edge highlights and making sure that everything is um, as, as, as highlighted as I can and then I stipple that on there every now and again just into the center where I really want that sort of light spot and then there's this little sort of really, like I would say it's like a secondary highlight um, a bounce highlight uh, on the chest as well Okay, so we're now pushing these highlights a little bit more. We've added a little bit more ivory to the mix. And um, we're now being really more focused on where we're putting them. Um, I think at this point I've got quite a nice shade. Um, I think I do come back in later on with a, another glaze. Just to sort of pull that down a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's at this point I'm really sort of focusing more on the highlights. Uh, rather than the, um, the sort of the the color transitions or anything like that so i'm kind of just really trying to make sure that i push those highlights as much as i can um i do think it's looking pretty good i, I mean like this is not bad actually it, it's uh you probably get away with that in most cases uh the ab area the abs area again ah uh, can be a bit of a problem because they are so small um but I, I do try to pick them out so they do stand out quite well So I'm just mixing in a lot more ivory in, and I think um, I, I had like mixing a little bit of scrag brown into it as well. It's just sort of um, to get that little bit of an orangey tone to the highlight rather than um, like the ivory tone, because I think at this stage, the paint was definitely starting to move more towards a, a, a pure ivory. Um, so being very sort of more focused with the highlights now, um, Really sort of getting the edges, the light spots, where they're going to sort of be along the edges here. Um, and sort of just being a little bit more precise with my highlights. Um, to try to sort of sell that uh, non-metallic look. Which I, I do think I have achieved. I, I'm quite happy with how that it's now looking. Um, so just going backwards and forwards. And, and again, one of the things I really want to like to iterate, iterate in this is like... For no, things like non-metallic metals, you're going to come backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards a lot of the time um, with the process. Um, and like even now looking at this, I can see why I come in with another glaze very shortly. Because this is not copper, this is brass. Um, it's got that orangey yellow, which is kind of what you want. Uh, but this is definitely, definitely more in the sort of uh, brass sort of spectrum now rather than copper um so we are going to be doing a, another glaze all over just to pull that down um back down into sort of like the orangey tone uh and then we'll we'll come back in with those highlights uh, but first 
I'm going to push those up quite bright so the glaze over the top will work quite well uh, and then um, we'll, we'll adjust it as and when we can and this is what I mean I didn't want to really edit everything out for for this video I wanted to show you the process because like the the beauty thing about painting is like you can be like halfway through um, like a project like halfway through a paint job and then realize that you know you, you're going to need to change direction and change course um, and then just do it and then be able to have to do a few slight adjustments and, and change um, change what you're doing uh, on the fly and and that's and that's really kind of what this video is about um, and what this whole thing was it this started out as very much a I'm gonna try non-metallic um, copper because I haven't done it for a while uh, let's try it uh, oh well it's this is looking more brass than copper like how do I fix that how do I achieve that how do I get there um, so yeah I mean like at this point I would you, you know that would be pretty good non-metallic you could you could pull that off quite nicely um, but yeah it's not where I needed to be so we're gonna have to go on and adjust that and then get that to where it needs to be You'll be pleased to know that this video is uh, almost over not not long to go um, and then it's it's going to be all finished and we're, we're definitely moving into the uh, the end stages of uh, the painting now um, it's all highlights uh, spot highlights edge highlights and really sort of um, trying to push that shine effect and make it look like uh, it is a shiny surface uh, yeah so here we are with the uh, the glaze and you can see me it's 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 very much um, a Dumbo brown glaze and we're sort of just pushing that in and around where we need it um, and and that's to just to get it back down into that sort of orangey tone uh, because like I said I, I definitely moved into the, the sort of brass spectrum so I glaze over it and then um, I get a hairdryer and I give it a good blast of a hairdryer to give that a good dry um, and with the power of editing it's all done so one of the things that I do now is um, I, I mix a little bit of scribe brown into the mix um, and, and I do that to kind of sort of just get that orangey tone back into it and it, and even though this looks like it's quite a bright highlight um with the um the the ivory and and everything else um it kind of is but it's it's also got like that sort of orangey pale scrag brown in it um and that's just the really sort of like try to get that brass tone that copper tone sorry back into the color um, so I'll be, again, I'll be just going back around after the glaze and reapplying and, and re-pushing the highlights and then bringing everything back up again and um, yeah so backwards and forwards backwards and forwards is the name of the game here.
So obviously focusing the highlights on the edges and around the center of the, the chess piece. And, it, and every now and again, I'll sort of come off it uh, and sort of move into the center and sort of push those highlights a little bit more. Because at this point, I'm really wanting to push uh, the sort of light areas um, because that's where the, the vast majority of the shine is going to be. And that's what I really want. I really want to sort of really enhance that. And this is where the the, uh, the ivory and the mixed into the is going to look. Um, so what I've done here is this is just a little bit of uh, Doomball Brown and Scrag Brown. And it's a very small glaze. And what I'm doing is I'm just glazing this in. It's kind of like, like a mid-tone. Uh, just glazing this in to where um, next to next to the sort of more highlighted areas and the reason why i've done this is to kind of just get that mid-tone back in um because it was looking um too bright in parts and it's it's just to get that orangey color back in again without actually going over with the glaze so you know you can um you can do that um if you really really need to Okay, so we're very much near the end now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little bit of a black glaze. And what I'm doing is I'm glazing this in um, into where all the shadows are and in the darkest point. So like really where I want it to be really dark. Um, I'm glazing this in. And what this will do is it will add the contrast between the, the highlights and the shadows. And it kind of really pushes that illusion that this is a metallic surface um, so you can kind of see where I've done it at the bottom end of the pectorals and I'm doing it sort of in the underside of the pectoral armor and like sort of where those shadow points are at the bottom there um, and then very small glazes very precise glazes in and around that sort of like spot highlight and again all that dark black around those highlight colors will really make that surface pop and you can really see straight away just after one pass how that sort of really pushed those highlights really really more um, and you can still see that orangey tone as well from the previous glaze of that mid-tone coming back in um, so I think this is really where it really starts to to sort of show itself off and then what I'll do is I'll push the highlights with some pure um, ivory just to um, just to sort of get those last point highlights done so this is just a glaze in between all of the uh, the pectoral muscles and then just going back in again on the uh, on the sorry this is on the chest the the last glaze was on in and around all the abs So now what I'm doing is just coming in with the final highlights and I'd gone a little bit too heavy there and so I, I rinsed off my brush and um, I kind of just sort of like feathered that color out a little bit. Um, not really a worry, uh, it wasn't 
you kind of where I wanted the highlight anyway but the the paint was a bit too thick and um, didn't actually come off my brush properly so I've been quite careful with my uh, edge highlighting uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just sort of like picking out the sharpest points um, and really sort of enhancing those highlights um, and picking out all of the little rivets and and things like that kind of now moving into that final stages of the chess piece So I've just moved around um, with this um, pure, well, it's almost pure. It's pretty much like 90% ivory at this point. Um, and I'm just picking out all of the the brightest points and those little highlights. Um, I do do a, a couple of little spot highlights um, in the very, in the very sort of sharpest point, um, just to sort of uh, get those spot highlights in with pure ivory. And so yeah, that's, that's literally all I'm doing at this point. Looking really good, actually. Really, I think at this, this stage, I was looking at it going, yeah, hey, yeah, I'll edit the video. This has actually turned out quite well. It's, it's a lot better than I actually um, and sort of expected in my head. Uh, and we'll go for it and we'll just do a, a, we'll do a video. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. You know, it's all about, you know, getting the content made and making the content. Um, I enjoyed doing it it was I enjoy little things like this sort of um, just just going through the process and, and practicing and uh, just doing stuff because it's it's how you improve as a painter to to sort of practice and and I've definitely got a lot to still learn um, and develop as a paint a miniature painter so you know I'm hopefully that you're enjoying this journey with me um, and that you, you you know you've got your brushes out and you're, you're having a crack at it as well um, if the if this the voiceover has been a bit rambly I like I said I don't I don't edit my videos in in regards to with a script I kind of just um, say it as it is uh, that way I, I try to I think that it can be as um, as honest and as um, genuine as I possibly can in regards to what I'm saying and it, it's basically coming from me and not anything else so um, what I'm doing now is I'm just literally this is like pure pure like literally pure um, ivory and I'm just putting these spot highlights and I put that little highlight in the shadow and it, it's kind of just um, to really sort of enhance that um, to really sort of make that stand out and pop um, and then I, I put it all in the corners and uh, all of the sort of prominent areas where it would you know you would get those little spot highlights uh, the spot highlights is uh, you know kind of cool it's kind of a little focal point where the light is hitting uh, and I think it just sells that um, that non-metallic look And that's pretty much it peeps uh, I'll let you um, finish off this and uh, I hope you like it like I said please you know give us some support tickle the algorithm and I'll see you in the next video hope you enjoyed this one
so that's the video um like i said this was just literally a spur of the moment thing i was practicing some non-metallic and i thought you know what i haven't really done copper brass in a while um let's try that out and i thought you know what would be a really cool idea is if i turn the camera on and i record what i'm doing and i edit this video as little as possible to show you the raw technique as the as literally as I, how, how i would do it so sometimes as i'm saying in the video sometimes what i feel that a lot of painting tutorials are very edited are very scripted and show you what needs to be done which is kind of a good way in a teaching method because you can get the points across but sometimes it's a little bit easier just to show you the method without any bells and whistles attached to it so i kind of fit went for that very much like heavily inspired from what Lawrence has just said in um, the the podcast with Pardo about basically if you've got a passion for making videos, which I have, and a passion for Warhammer and painting, then just make and then get that together. And that's literally what this is. Painting, making a video, boom. And I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment in below if you find it any helpful, or if you want me to do anything else like this again. And ring the bell and give this a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one, people. Thanks very much. Goodbye for now.